Uh, we're going to have two short talks now, 15-minute talks. Um, Haas is going to do the first one. Um, Haas is a fellow MVP and uh, astronaut. I don't know. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> no. I was going to make a really <laughs> stupid joke. I didn't. Um, oh, this is not going. Come on. Hey. There we go. Um, you're going to talk about um, Kita. So if you don't know what Kita is, are you about to find out? All right. You good? Yeah. Excellent. Please welcome Haas. Thank you. Well, morning, everyone. My name is Haas. Today I'm talking about Kida, towards through serverless. Um, a lot of people would say, what's through serverless? So we'll find out. Um, so I thought we'd start with a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Haas Altaya. I'm one of the organizers here. So if you like the events, come say hi. If you don't like it, blame it on Tom. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP. Uh, I focus on data, AI, and IoT. I also do a bit of DevOps. I work as a, a director for VNEX, the small consulting company. And we are also hiring. So if you are interested, please come and have a chat after. I uh, would love to have a chat. Um, I also organize a number of other user groups, like Global Azure Bootcamp, uh, Melbourne Azure Nights. So if you are interested in speaking or attending, please come and grab me after this. I would love to have a chat. We're always looking for speakers and would love to have more people attending. So that's enough about me. Now, I thought we'd start with a, a short story. Um, meet Bob. Bob is coming to you as a customer with a requirement for a new project. Um, what Bob wants is a really simple application. Um, users will upload a photo, then the application will extract some text, and then we'll send an email. Um, fairly straightforward. Bob thinks that this is a great idea. This application is going to be the next Facebook. Um, so we just need to build an application for Bob. Here comes Lisa. She's a passionate serverless developer. Um, she loves serverless. She knows the power that it gives her. So she says, oh, I know um, this problem. It's, this seems quite straightforward. I could build it using Azure Functions. I can use it uh, AWS Lambda. Or I could even build it on um, Google Cloud. Obviously, we all know Azure Functions is the best, right? But um, she's giving Bob the options. She's saying, OK, we could do it on this or that. And she's explaining to Bob that this is really a typical serverless problem because you have some events coming from an external source, and then you need to um, do some processing. And then after that, you probably want to shut down what, what um, compute you have. And then um, Bob drops this bombshell. What about portability? I don't want to be locked in. I want to be able to move around. I don't want to be just keeping all my load with AWS or with, with, um, uh, with Azure. Now, if you, have, if you are like me, if you have worked with banks or mining companies, you would know that there is a lot of talk about um, can I move my workload from one cloud provider to another? Now, how realistic that is, I haven't really seen one company that's really doing this migration, moving from one, one, part, one, one cloud provider to another. But then here comes Bob, and Bob is a customer. The customer is always right. He wants a way of taking this workload and then moving it between different cloud providers. And then Bob says, hey, I heard this thing about Kubernetes. Sounds like it's really cool. It's cloud agnostic. It provides you with self-healing um, and a lot of other features. Now, even though Bob doesn't really know what secret management or um, storage orchestration is. He just sees that there are a lot of bullet points, and it seems like it's really cool. So he wants to have this good thing. So he's asking Lisa, can we have this new serverless application that you have? I like, I like the idea of serverless, but can we take this and put it on Kubernetes? Because Kubernetes is, is the trend now, and everybody's talking about it. So what, what he's wanting, he wants to take the power of Kubernetes, wants to, Kubernetes to provide that power of compute, and then run the application as serverless. And then um, Lisa tells him, with great uh, power comes great responsibility. Now, if we are going and running this on Kubernetes, we're going to need to take care of all the scaling that comes with it. So we're going to have to configure uh, the scaling ourselves. We're going to have to do a lot of nitty-gritty details without leveraging one of the platforms that, that provide us with that. And then um, Lisa remembers that she heard about this cool thing that's called uh, KEDA, which is um, Kubernetes, Kubernetes event-based auto-scaling uh, component. Now, it's quite mouthful to say. Um, so what does that mean? Um, it's basically a component that you can install on your Kubernetes cluster, regardless of where it is, and then it would allow you to do auto-scaling. Now, the beauty of it, it allows you to do auto-scaling not just for a particular 
container, but for any container that you have. It's an open source project that's developed uh, in partnership between Microsoft and Red Hat. Um, so she's thinking, well, this is a perfect requirement. Bob wants to have this application as serverless. He wants it on Kubernetes. Keda gives us exactly that. So she tells Bob, we can use Keda, which gives us this auto-scaling based on event. And then Bob is confused. He's saying, but hold on. Kubernetes is supposed to give us auto-scaling, doesn't it? So why do we need Keda? Which is true, right? If you have used Kubernetes, you would know that Kubernetes can give you the ability to auto-scale up or down if you want. And then Lisa would start explaining. So the auto-scaling that, that Keda is providing us is very different from what Kubernetes is providing us. Um, the key difference is that it's based on events. These events could be external to your um, Kubernetes containers or your, your instances that are running in Kubernetes. Now what that means is that you could scale your um, instances based on external sources, which is perfect because in our instance, in our scenario, that the requirement that we have, we are trying to scale based on how many photos are uploaded by our users. So this is, this is perfect example. The other advantage that Keda gives us, it gives us that ability to do proactive auto-scaling. Uh, auto so with Kubernetes, you can configure auto-scaling based on the resource consumption. You could say when CPU usage peaks into 80%, then start auto-scaling, or when memory reaches into this level, then auto start auto-scaling. Now, this is good, it gives us auto-scaling, but this is really reactive. What that means is, if you are getting a bust of load on your HTTP server that's loading, handling this, or even on your um, uh, any workload, then there is going to be a lag between when the orchestrator, Kubernetes here, detecting that there is a need for scale and the time that it takes to, to scale and spin up new instances. With Keda, because it's proactive, because we are scaling based on an external source, we really don't have that lag because the moment we see that there is enough load that we need to, to um, handle, we just spin up these new instances. So it's really good. The other advantage that I have seen to this, um, if you are like me and you have done a lot of mistakes with coding, then you know that sometimes you might have a bug in your code and then you are consuming a lot of memory or a lot of CPU where you shouldn't be using. With Kubernetes, Kubernetes is just going to give you all these resources and it's just going to keep scaling because you want it to scale, so it, I'll just scale you. But then if you are basing your auto-scaling based on actual events, you're really scaling based on actual demands rather than based on CPU and, and memory uh, usage. The other good advantage that uh, Keda gives us is fine-grained control. What that means is you can scale your Kubernetes, uh, your instances in Kubernetes from and to zero. So if you have this container instance running and it's supposed to handle some load, but then there is no load, there is no point of having that instance running. So you can scale it into zero. With Keda, you can get this advantage, but then with Kubernetes, you cannot. You have to always have at least one or more. So that's another advantage for Keda. The other beauty of Keda is that you can run anywhere, whether your Kubernetes is with, um, in the cloud, on the edge, on premises, it doesn't matter, you can run it anywhere. Um, you can use Kubernetes in, in Azure, uh, AWS, or, or, um, or Google. It doesn't matter, you can install Keda as a component into your Kubernetes cluster, and then you can, you can take advantage of that. So what type of events does Keda support, or scalers that does Keda support today? It does support actually quite a, a range of events. There is probably 10 or more, and there is a long list of other events that are uh, being uh, built today. So some of the common ones is an Azure Event Hub or a storage queue is, is a really good example where if you have load coming in, you're dropping a message into a queue and then you're just loading that. Um, it, it works really nicely with, with Keda, and there are quite a few other ones as well that are available. And again, there is, because it's an open source project, it's all in the, in the open, and you can see that there is a list of uh, other scalers or events that are being built today. But out of all these other scalers and events, um, Keda loves Azure Function. Um, the beauty of using Keda with Azure Function is that it has a native integration with the tooling. So when you are building, um, or when you're wanting to take advantage of Keda and you are using Azure Functions, it has that native integration, so you don't really have to do any scaffolding, you don't have to do a lot of setup. It's already uh, all there for you. With, with the use of your um, Azure Functions um, command line tooling, 
Uh, you could use it for installing um, Keda on your Kubernetes cluster, so it's just a simple command. And then once you install it, you could just say to your Azure uh, function CLI, I want to deploy this Azure function as a Kubernetes, as a container instance into this Kubernetes cluster. So here we are telling it that's the container registry, that's the name of the instance that's gonna be running, and then it would go and deploy that, that um, Azure function there. So it's really simple, it's nicely integrated, you don't need to do a lot of the scaffolding and the setup. Um, if you wanted to build using other scalers or other events, you can also do that, but then you won't get that native um, integration. Because of the short time, so I didn't really prepare a live demo, I'm not as brave as Jeff, uh, but you can see here, uh, this actually I think was done by Jeff as well, so he takes credit for it. Um, so what this is doing, this is an Azure function, it's very very simple Azure function, it's listening to um, a message landing on the queue, and it's dropping messages on the queue as you can see there, and then it's watching for deployment on the Kubernetes cluster. When we start, there is zero deployment, there is zero instances that are running. As the load goes up, as we are adding more images, uh, sorry, as we are adding more messages into the queue, the scale um, kicks in, the auto scaling kicks in from Keda, and then you can see that we end up with about 16 uh, instances, which is really cool, because if we have, if we have relied on Kubernetes auto scaling, then we would have had to wait until that container instance uh, consumes a lot of memory and CPU, which we probably might lose some of our requests before we start auto-scaling. So that's the beauty of it. So in the end, Bob is victorious. He's happy. He got his, his application on, on true serverless. Um, he is taking advantage of Azure Function, which is uh, an open source runtime. You have the, the full tooling, the capacity that, that uh, you can do everything that you want to do with it. And he's taking advantage of Keda and deploying it into Kubernetes. So he has the best of both worlds, being able to um, develop uh, and take advantage of the Azure functions and the tooling that's, that's there, while at the same time be able to deploy his workload to anywhere that he wants, um, taking advantage of Keda. So that's really all. If you are interested, um, here are a couple of URLs. Um, the first one is a sample application for Azure functions. Um, if you are interested, there is also a link down there for the Keda project on um, GitHub, and that's my uh, that's my yeah, profile and uh, Twitter handle. If you have any questions, please please uh, feel free to come and have a chat after. Thanks very much. Thanks, Hus.